And welcome, everyone. We'll be right with you starting our Cruise Control Radio Live event. Uh, I'm Fred Staub, and my co-host Les Jackson will be joining us. So stay tuned for Cruise Control. We'll be coming up. We've got a lot of great stories. We've got uh, the Jeep Wagoneer reveal. We put some of the uh, teaser videos up on our Facebook page, uh, and we'll be getting to that. And uh, we will uh, also be talking about a really cool reveal from Porsche, the Taycan Cross Turismo, which is uh, a really exciting-looking vehicle. So we'll talk about that in just a minute when we get going on Cruise Control. Hello, everyone. I'm Fred Staub, and the other person you are about to see is none other than Les Jackson. Uh, I've heard of him. He I'm, looks familiar. He does look familiar, yes. And so we are live on both Facebook and YouTube. We're glad that you are long for the ride. Um, we've got a lot of uh, great stories to get to, Les. Uh, the Jeep Wagoneer is going to be premiering uh, this week, and it's one of just many premieres that we've talked about on the show lately. Yes, that's that's true. There's another. Oh, uh, there's. Um, well, well, just some of the stories we're going to cover on the air. Porsche uh, ha is revealing its uh, all electric Taycan or Taycan. Yeah. How they, do you pronounce that? Taycan. I do. But Taycan. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a pretty cool looking vehicle. It is uh, it is sort of a. Um, well, I, I would guess it's sort of a crossover. You look at it, it, it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, they call it the Turismo. It's like someone took a Panamera and uh, basically squashed it down. But you kind do, of a shooting break? Kind of a shooting break, although you do. Uh, they brought out a couple of electric bikes with it, Les, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think that looks pretty cool. <laughs> so uh, I think... It's a neat-looking vehicle. We'll talk about that. We're going to do that, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the best resale values if you're looking to buy a vehicle and that's something you're concerned about. Um, got a lot to get to. Uh, also, That's true. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, and we, we have uh, well, I was going to mention, we have um, a, a real serious crisis in the country <laughs> among all, all sorts of other crises. Yeah. Traffic deaths are worse or higher per capita they, than they've been in nearly a hundred years. Yeah, and less people are driving, and there's more safety uh, things available, so it, it makes you wonder what's going on there, right? It does. It does. Awful lot of, well, we'll, we'll have try, to and, see. try and pin it down. Yeah, yeah, we'll try and pin that down. And then we're going to talk tech. Amazon, a Fire TV, teams up with uh, Stellantis uh, to provide television on the go. That will be our talking tech. And in the second hour, we're going to have some interesting uh, tech less. Two companies are approaching uh, electric vehicle recharging in different ways. Uh, one, I think, is a little bit more viable than the other. But uh, I want to get your take on that uh, later on. It, it's It's... They're trying to build their own infrastructures. I, I, it has to be universal. I just don't see how you can go it alone. Yeah. Uh, well, one of them, one of them wants to replace batteries. They have this setup where you drive in, right, right, and they can replace the battery completely robotically. Which I don't see how you would could keep every type of battery in stock there and. Batteries yeah, are just made you? to unclip and come out. They're bolted in. They're virtually part of the vehicle, right? Well, that's right. I, I just don't see how you could do that in a practical way. Yeah. Um, but that's an interesting question, and I'm going to bring it up. Uh, actually, GM's electric vehicle um, 
VP is going to be giving a virtual talk to the Washington Post this week, which I will attend and I'll ask him. Maybe you can also ask him about this, uh, since he is from <laughs> GM. Got some details on the hybrid E-Ray Corvette. Uh, so yes. we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, <laughs> it uses something called pouch batteries that will fit in the frame of the vehicle. So certainly you could not remove that easily, I would say. Uh, I wouldn't think so. No, no, that's that's, that's part I mean, of it. Hey, let's, is... let's roll our open and get rolling on Cruise Control Radio. Here we go. This is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Cruise Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the air. air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin. Cruise Control. Because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Hello and welcome to Cruise Control Radio. I'm Fred Staub. The other voice you're about to hear is none other than Les Jackson. Hey, Les. Hey, Fred. How are you today? Uh, this is the first weekend we've uh, been on in quite a while where it's not raining or snowing. <laughs> I know, I know. And I tell you what, we've got a lot of stories uh, coming up in the next two hours, really loaded up with stories. We're starting with the Jeep Wagoneer reveal. It's getting close. It's going to happen this week on Thursday. And uh, from what we hear, Les, there's no stick-on wood grain anywhere in sight on this new vehicle. Yes, there was a there was a time in my life when I used to think that looked great. <laughs> Will it make a comeback? I don't know, but probably not <laughs> on, the, think so. on the Jeep but, uh, Wag over, Grand Wagoneer. That's right. Over at Porsche, they're revealing their swoopy all-electric Taycan Cross Turismo. It's a cool-looking car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a shooting brake to me. Yeah, it's sort of like a station wagon almost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're even showing off some electric bikes. I want to. I want to ride an electric bike. Have you never ridden an electric bike? They're. Pretty... I've never ridden one. Yeah, they're fun. I rode one at an event in uh, China. And it was fun. It, uh, it, I rode it inside, and I got yelled at because I rode it all the way down and inside this giant mm. factory. Well, it was fun. I mean, how often do you get to, to ride something inside like that, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're also going to talk about uh, some resale values uh, from Kelly Blue Book. If you're looking at buying a vehicle and you want to get the best resale value, well, uh, we have some ideas for you. That's good news if you're out buying a vehicle, isn't it, Les? It is very good news um, for those of us who buy used vehicles. Um, if, uh, By the way, the other bad story we have is the people on the road was reduced in 2020, but the traffic deaths rose real high. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting thing to talk about because – you would think they would go down. We have safer vehicles. Uh, right. And we also have a lot less people, especially during 2020. But I know from uh, the early days of the pandemic, just driving around, some people were driving really way over their head. I've seen it, too, and I think this is pretty much universal. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. We're also going to talk tech. Amazon teams up with Stellantis uh, to provide television on the go. They're going to set up Fire TV. Of course, it will be streamed. And no more antennas on the roof of the car, right, Les? <laughs> That's right, which we never liked. No, that, uh, that, so. that, that, never really, that never really worked that well. Uh, you know, it always seemed that it was always breaking up in that. So all that and yeah. more when we get rolling on this edition of Cruise Control. I'm Fred Staub. He's Les Jackson. Don't forget, check us out at CruiseControlRadio.com. We'll be right back. Listen to the live feed of Cruise Control Radio every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Go to www.CruiseControlRadio.com to find out how to do it. Yeah, and we are glad to be live on uh, Facebook and YouTube, Les. Uh, I think that's the first to be live on both, and we welcome everyone that's watching, don't we? 
yeah. Uh, hopefully, we'll uh, gather more and more people every week. Um, they're welcome to comment. We will read the comments and try to respond to all of them. Yeah, absolutely. If you have a guest idea or a topic you'd like us to discuss, I know we have one interesting topic, Les, you and I have discussed. When you go out to buy a vehicle, uh, that destination charge has grown tremendously. And uh, later on, we're going to talk about a consumer report story that says that might be a way the automakers are padding their profit without putting the price up. That's right. Uh, that is very true. And it's <clears throat> there are a lot of little hidden fees in buying vehicles. You have to pay attention and refuse a Ex number of them. Yeah. Destination, you can't really refuse. They say that's built in. But you, when you're buying a vehicle, you have to think that, hey, uh, that is included. That's part of the price. You've got to remember. And in some cases, it's almost $2,000 now, which is. That just seems like, a cr I mean, I can ship a car across the country for 2000 <laughs> And Yes, but you can't make extra profit doing it. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, but it just seems excessive. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we're going to come back in with the show, so here we go. Cruise Control. And welcome and back. Les Jackson, take it. Well, I was going to say the same thing. Welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Les. He's Fred. Yeah. We have a bunch of stories to cover. So we're just going to do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's talk about the Jeep Wagoneer. We put some things up on our, a uh, uh, couple of posts up on our Facebook page about this. And uh, the Grand Wagoneer is going to be revealed this Thursday. You and I will be watching it. Uh, it is, um, it is well, going to be big, isn't it, Les? <laughs> it will. Well, of course, uh, Wagoneer is a, is a, historically famous name mm -hmm. uh when did they come out in the 60s uh i think they came out in the 60s and then they had a successful run um up until 1984 to 1991 i almost don't think it was there in 1991 but it was i it remember was, yeah. i remember it looking kind of old at the time but people loved it and they still love those things matter of fact there are companies that make their whole career out of restoring these things, right? There are. They're, they're very, very collectible. They're like uh, old Ford Broncos. Yeah. And um, they're coming up with a new one, of course. And as you say, without the uh, stick-on wood. <laughs> no, no stick-on wood grain. This one's going to be based on the Ram 1500, uh, which is a good thing to base anything on, a good uh, platform. And uh, it will probably compete with uh, vehicles like the Cadillac Escalade and the Lincoln Navigator. And uh, Ralph Gilles has nixed the idea. Ralph, of course, has been on the show before. Uh, I believe he's head of design for Stellantis, right? That's right. And That's he, right. Now, he says no yeah. wood grain. No wood grain. No. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. And I think yeah. it's going to be over $100,000. That's what I'm thinking. I think you're right. Yeah. But there is certainly an appetite for big SUVs. Uh, look at uh, Escalade. Still sells well. Of course, it just got a big uh, redesign. Uh, and uh, look at uh, look at the Grand Cherokee L. This is going to be even bigger than that. So uh, it's also going to cost a lot more. Look for it to be very luxurious. And I imagine uh, it will be trail rated since it is a Jeep, right? I would imagine, although with that kind of money, uh, I wouldn't want to take it off the pavement. <laughs> no, you, you you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to shove it into the mud or something like that, Les. No, uh, I think I'd rather keep it clean. Yeah. All right. Well, that is going to be coming up. You can see a teaser video of this. It's a 2022 model. Uh, and it is going to uh, be coming out on Thursday. We will uh, tell you all about that uh, on Cruise Control next week and get some information on it. And who knows, maybe we'll even have uh, Jim Morrison on. With Jim Morrison, the head of the Jeep brand, he's been on so much less on Cruise Control. We might as well give him his own chair, right? 
you're right. Yeah, we may just bring him into the studio, let him, uh, you know, ma- make lunch for us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he can bring lunch. Uh, I don't know if he's yeah. going to make it. I don't, I don't know anything about his uh, culinary skills. But uh, So we will be uh, on that and looking at that now. This week as well, this vehicle came out, uh, and this is the Taycan. Uh, this is the Taycan Gran Turismo, and it is a very slick, as you said earlier, shooting brake. Cross Turismo, I should call it. Yeah. You know, uh, we, we have two pictures showing. Uh, the first one is green. The second is white. Yeah, I'm not. It's amazing how much different a car looks in a different color. I'm not big on that green, but apparently a lot of people like it. <laughs> it certainly stands out, but I like the shape of the vehicle. How about you? I do, too. I think it's it's very attractive. Yeah, it's a good shape. And... Uh, they talk about it being uh, uh, designed for life on and off the asphalt. I, uh, I, you know, I don't think I'd take <clears> it off the asphalt. I like that side profile myself, uh, low and low and lean, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, now, of course, at, at, at the prices, no doubt it will be. Um, I wouldn't want to take it off road. No, not no. I wouldn't either. Uh, probably going to be in the mid ninety range. Completely electric, zero to sixty in just three point one seconds. Um, and I'm sorry, uh, the Taycan gets that, but the Cross Turismo uh, can get uh, zero to sixty in three point nine and four point eight seconds, depending on which version you get. Um, I think it's a cool looking car. Uh, as I said, they paired it. They paired it with the e-bike, as you see there, a couple of e-bikes there on the uh, hitch. Uh, the e-bike is a street-oriented bike, full suspension, carbon fiber frame, uh, and lots of good parts and pieces. Uh, and that is going to be uh, pretty cool. They, I, I love the name of the seat. It is it has a hydro, hyd, hydraulically adjustable Crank Brothers seat. Is that... <laughs> Is that what? is is that really their name, Crank Brothers? Uh, I guess. Um, why not? <laughs> why not? By the way, I love the uh, the back of the uh, bike rack. Yeah, it's like a Continental kit. Yeah, it does. It does look cool. That is, uh, when that comes up again, it is uh, even got uh, lights on the back for safety, which is which is kind of cool. I think. Um, I'm not a big fan of that green. How about you? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy it. Yeah. Um, it it could look good on an old British sports car. Yeah, but there are a lot of uh, colors available. One of the things uh, Porsche prides itself on, uh, and um, the e-bikes. You were saying you never rode an e-bike, right? No. Never yeah, have. they're pretty amazing. They can get up to 35 miles an hour. Matter of fact, in New York City, a lot of the delivery people use them actually illegally because in New York, you would have to register that as a motorcycle, believe it or not. Um, and uh, pizza delivery people and all that, I would sometimes see them when there wasn't a lot of traffic sailing along on these things, sometimes without a helmet. Uh, but they really, really go quick, quickly. Well, thirty-five miles an hour—it's at least a at least a motor scooter. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It is yeah. it, certainly a motor scooter, but uh, cool stuff. Love to check it out. I wonder if they'll put the e-bikes in the press fleet. What do you think? I, hmm, you know, it's interesting. Didn't maybe? Didn't maybe? You, didn't you tell me one of our automotive journalists had a Mercedes? with uh, a couple of bikes on the roof and yes. <laughs> decided to put it in a parking garage but forgot that there were bikes on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, there's a picture of it somewhere in our files. Wow. That uh, that would be a mess, and that probably... Uh, embarrassing. Embarrassing and uh, probably a discussion with the uh, manufacturer after that, right? Uh, yeah, there would have been... Uh... A discussion. Yeah, a discussion. And it certainly, I would not want to do that. It would be very embarrassing. 
Hey, you're listening to Cruise Control. We're glad you're with us on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. If you have a comment or a question or a guest you'd like to hear about or a topic you'd like us to cover, please put it in those comments. We're glad to do it on future shows. And don't forget to check us out at CruiseControlRadio.com. When we come back, we're going to talk about resale values, which is uh, a good thing if you are getting ready to uh, to buy a vehicle less. So when we come back on Cruise Control, yes. we will talk more about Kelly Blue Book resale values and more. Let me uh, pull up. Our resale values. Um, do you think about that when you uh, buy a vehicle less, the resale value? Or, or they always say there's two ways to go about it. You can uh, think about that and sell it in three years or so, or you can just drive it into the ground. I think we're both drive it into the ground folks, aren't we? We are. Um, basically, we don't get rid of them until there's no resale value <laughs> at all. <laughs> Other than, you know, it's weighed in scrap or something, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I uh, let, let's take a look at the resale values here. Uh, this is from Kelly Blue Book. One of the best resale values is the Volvo XC40, which is their small uh, crossover. The 2021 Volvo XC40 has earned the best resale value award by Kelly Blue Book. Now, they're kind of looking into the future because this is a relatively new model, isn't it? It is. Um, I wasn't aware it was that popular. Yeah. Well, it is a it is a small uh, small crossover. There, the recharge version of that is fully electric. Uh, the other version is uh, not a hybrid or anything like that. It's just a regular internal combustion engine. We're going to talk more about Volvo too later on, moving away from internal combustion engines completely. But um, it is uh, marked by the as the best resale value award by Kelly Blue Book. And uh, it has strong residual value. It has all the uh, safety features like lane keeping alert, blind spot uh, assist, pilot assist technology. The XC40 uh, also has multiple powertrain options, including the 402 horsepower fully electric version. It's interesting, though, since this is a, a new vehicle, I wonder how they know about how it will fare in resale value. I don't, yeah, I don't how know. do they know? I don't know about that. But here are other picks that have been around a little bit more, and, and I think uh, Kelly Blue Book is not going out on the uh, uh, on the limb here with these. Um, Jeep Wrangler, Jeep Gladiator, Ram Pickups are all in the top ten of the Kelly Blue Book resale value. We know this with Wranglers. They really – hold their value. I have a friend that just sold a used uh, sold his Wrangler which had over 100,000 miles on it and he got a substantial trade in for it. Hmm. Uh yeah, well we uh, we know Jeep Wranglers um they, they just sort of never lose value um and it's you know good for them. Um and that's been true for decades. Yeah. I don't know why that is, uh, but uh, but it is, and it's something. If you're buying a Wrangler, it's something to think about. Same goes for the uh, Ram 1500, which has uh, been a great uh, you know developments in pickup trucks. It's kind of leading the way when it comes yep. to pickup trucks in ride quality and in uh, the luxurious interior. The Gladiator, of course, uh, not an inexpensive vehicle, but holds its value. And they also say the Ram Heavy Duty, which is certainly uh, something if you want to do some work or tow a trailer or uh, something like that. <clears throat> but uh, if you're heading out, uh, take a look over at the Kelly Blue Book website for the best resale values. That, those are some of them. Um, I'm yeah, the Gladiator has only been out for three years. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's been out for three years. It doesn't seem like three years, but... But I guess it it has been, and yeah, yeah, pretty cool. 
Hey, you're listening to Cruise Control Radio Live on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. If you got any questions, make sure you put them in the comments. Uh, any suggestions for a new um, for a new segment or a new story idea or a guest, it's all there. Uh, <laughs> we have one comment. Wood grain is like cowbell. You can't have too much. Talking about the <laughs> grand, <laughs> the, uh, grand <laughs> the Grand Wagoneer. Um, do you think we've seen this uh, with Silverados and that people have brought back the two tone Silverados dealers have brought it back on the new vehicle. Do you think anyone will bring back the uh, stick on wood grain on the Grand Wagoneer as their special dealer? edition? Um, I well, you know what? Uh, I think the aftermarket will provide that and uh, some people will buy it. You know, they make removable wallpaper. It would be kind of funny to put it on there, wouldn't it? Or or a wrap <laughs> with that stuff on there. I think I think it would be pretty funny. Somebody will do it. Somebody's going to Photoshop it on, don't you think? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You're listening to Cruise Control. We're glad you're along for the ride. Um, let's talk about this next story, Les. It's, uh, it's a bit of a serious one, and it has to do with uh, traffic accidents. And if you apply logic to this it doesn't make any sense in 2020 because many of us were not driving or not driving the way we used to uh but now traffic deaths rose in 2020 it's estimated to be the largest increase since 1924 what do you make of this it's really shocking um it's it's an eight percent rise over 2019, which you know was kind of running in the high 30s, 30,000, uh, and then all of a sudden it goes to 42 with with a 13 percent drop in the total traffic. Actually, more than that. My, you know, just looking around, it's <clears throat> total traffic's been down a lot. Yeah, it it's still. I mean, I was driving this week in what would have been considered rush hour. And while there were more cars out uh, than there have been in the last couple of months, it still was nothing like the rush hour I'm used to. Certainly, I've been driving in uh, New York City a couple of times, and there's, like, nobody there. It's it's like it's an early Sunday yeah. morning or something. Yeah. So, so uh, I have seen, though, people uh, early on in the um, coronavirus situation, they would – when cops weren't around, when there weren't many people on the road at all, they went over the top crazy. I mean, following each other, shifting lanes left and right, high rates of speed. They figured no one's around, and they go for it. And it, uh, I think activities like that may have uh, caused this rise. What do you think? I, I think you're right. Um, I'd like to see the demographics when they come out of what age groups um, have been crashing and, and dying the most. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect it's the group you're talking about. Yeah. These numbers, by the way, are from a report of the National Safety Council, or NSC. 42,000 people are estimated to have died on U.S. roadways last year, largest motor vehicle death tally in 13 years. And that's 1.49 deaths per 100 million miles traveled, up 24% from 1.20 in 2019. So uh, the annual population Scary. death rate was 12.8 deaths per 100,000. It is. It is. And uh, let's look at some of the states uh, where they were up. Uh, Arkansas, plus 26. Connecticut, plus 22. Uh, careful less. District of Columbia, plus 33 percent georgia 18 percent mississippi rhode island uh had 26 percent gain south dakota plus 33 percent and vermont 32 percent so big big gains i mean thir up 33 percent that's that's huge it is huge um now again i just i don't know why um this is happening it Unless it's just a case of, as you say, people are just, uh, you know, they, they just 
think they don't have to pay attention because there's hardly anybody on the road. I think they can get away with it. That's what I think. Yeah, well. Or they're just distracted completely by life and not paying attention. Um, you know, it, it could be that as well. I, I don't know. Uh, well, I, uh, I, carry, I get the traffic reports for Virginia every day in my email. And the number of people uh, being stopped on the, on the Capitol Beltway or the interstates doing over 100 is amazing. It's like one every other couple days. What happens? When you're doing uh, over 100 well, in, a, in a, I guess, not, a 55, right? In Virginia, uh, going over 100, period, it, no matter what the speed limit is, uh, you're arrested. Wow. Uh, you, the car is impounded. Wow. Until the trial, and you probably won't get it back. Wow. Um, big, big, big fines uh, and jail. Wow. So that's pretty serious. I think I think they should publicize mm-hmm. that very clearly because I don't know if a lot of people know that they would think, oh, well, you know, I'll probably pay uh, uh, I'll probably pay a, a big fine and get a lot of points and have to pick up garbage on the side of the road. Right. Uh, at the very least. <laughs> but I think you also I have to check them. There are mandatory jail terms, I think. Of like maybe 10 days for the first time, and <laughs> you don't want to do it a second time. No, I think I think they have a portable battery-powered shredder, and they just say, can I see your license? And then they just shove it in. Yeah, <laughs> and a license suspension. Yes, yeah, yeah. Hey, you are listening to Cruise Control. We are live on Facebook and live on YouTube. So if you uh, are anywhere near your computer, make sure you send us a note and uh, send us a comment. And we were glad to uh, follow up on that. And if it's a story you like to hear, well, that's uh, that's good. Well, we'll get to it and uh, we'll get the guest on Uh, a lot of interest. A lot of people are talking about electric cars and, you know, it's becoming more of a reality for people that maybe they will own an electric car in their lifetime. We're going to have a couple of stories coming up, less on uh, two different companies uh, having a different ideas on um, how to charge them up. Now, that's one of them uh, is saying they can just swap the batteries of the cars. Another one is saying we'll bring the electric charge to you. But I think we're going to see a lot more of this type of uh you know ingenuity coming up down the line don't you i think so too but i i think swapping the batteries um is 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 similar to going up uh, in space and fixing the hubble mirror (laughs) it can be done Uh, but not very easily and it yeah it, it just doesn't make sense unless there's no other way yeah yeah, unless you had a couple of giant D cells that you could just <laughs> flip them out, guy comes out with a fork <laughs> truck and takes them. Yeah, out. yeah. It's we'll, not you know, it's not a little double A battery. No, no. We'll uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more in the second hour of cruise control. Let's uh, let's talk about Kia right now. The Kia Nero sure. Hybrid and a plug-in hybrid. Uh, there are two uh, really nice vehicles. If you've never been in a Nero, they are. They are very, they're a crossover, but they're very station wagon-like, and I say that in, in, a, good, uh, in a good way. Um, and they have a plug-in hybrid version, and they have a regular hybrid version. They've announced some changes uh, Kia has to the Nero hybrid and plug-in models, um, and they're continuing to grow this model area. The... Um, They're going to get some newly added safety features like a standard rear occupant alert, a bigger display, 8-inch display, smart key equipped vehicles will get remote engine start, navigation vehicles will receive map care programs uh, with 10 years of complimentary map updates. And uh, the Nero is also getting an expanded DriveWise advanced driver assistance system 
to feature navigation-based smart cruise control and curve uh, NSCC-C on vehicles with navigation and smart cruise control. So that's that's helping you get around the curves. Great little vehicle, though. Uh, the plug-in hybrid, I believe, gets something like 20 miles uh, on a charge of, uh, of a 20 mile range, 26 miles actually charge on. Yeah, on all electric. <clears throat> yeah, on all electric. And then of course converts over to a, uh, to a hybrid. Nice looking vehicle. I went on the launch of this vehicle and I thought it was pretty cool. If I remember correctly, uh, there is, uh, th that all wheel drive is not available. So that could be a, a turnoff for some people. But I do like the fact that it is um, that it is uh, available as a plug-in hybrid. You know, I have been talking about this a lot. You have too. Right now, that is a good alternative for a lot of people to uh, a full electric vehicle if they just don't feel comfortable with making that switch right yet. Yeah, you get to experience uh, all the uh, the electricness. Uh, but you still have the uh, hybrid system. Yeah, and the fact that you could get um, that you could get uh, 26 miles of electric range would be great. Uh, and the hybrid's not bad at all either. That that that's up in the 40s, uh, 44 city, uh, 40. Uh, I'm sorry, 44 highway, uh, 48 city for a combined number of 48. Not bad for that little vehicle, is it? It's quite good. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's we're going to see a rise in gas prices. Yeah, and it just makes sense to not have to fill it up all the time. And uh, the driving experience is a good one. Um, I was just in the XC60 Volvo, huh. the recharge. And uh, that is a plug-in hybrid, and it was great. I mean, I didn't even notice it when it uh, transitioned from um, transitioned from uh, electric to hybrid. It was just so smooth. I think it happened while I was on the highway. Didn't know it at all. Really, really nice vehicle. Have you been in the XC60? Have no, I haven't. Um, I need to give them a call. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so jumping back to, uh, to the uh, Nero, uh, pricing on this. The plug-in hybrid is very, uh, very affordable, actually, from the LXS, LXS, which is their base model, which, as you know, on um, Kia means it's probably fairly well equipped. Uh, Twenty-nine thousand five ninety. The EX is thirty-three thousand three ninety, and the EX Premium thirty-six thousand five fifty. I think uh, Kia is still eligible for a lot of the um, discounts and tax rebates, so I think uh, I think that's uh, probably going to come down significantly, wouldn't you say? I would say that's correct. Um, it's a bargain, no, whether or not you get a, a, a you know a, a tax uh, credit or whatever, whatever your state offers. Yeah. Uh, and and you're right. It's a nice car. Yeah, nice vehicle. And uh, the only thing is, I believe, and I'd have to check this, but I don't think it is available with all-wheel drive. But if you don't need all-wheel drive, um, you, you look at even the numbers on the hybrid that, that almost 50 miles to the gallon with a vehicle that you can put things in and has all the safety features. So it, it could be. Uh, something to look at uh, if you are that's right yeah and as you and i know kia gives you virtually everything included that is absolutely true yeah. um check them out yeah hey you want to talk a little tech Les jackson i know you like to sure. talk tech don't you so absolutely so i re remember <laughs> people trying to rig up tv in their cars for a long time and um, typically, they would put a little TV. I remember some of the car services that I took. Uh, <laughs> they would have a little TV shoved between the seats with a bungee cord on it and an antenna glued to the uh, – you remember yep. they had those boomerang antennas on the uh, yep, rear? that's right. Do you remember that was like a, the peel-and-stick customizing hot look of uh, 1979, I believe? 
uh, where people yeah. would put them on their cars even if they didn't have a TV or had no need for it. <laughs> <laughs> the JC or, the JC Whitney look, right? Uh, every once in a while, you'd see a mobile home with a with a, a full size, you know, house type TV antenna on the roof. Yes, yes. Well, um, now at the folks uh, over at uh, Stellantis and and uh, Jeep have uh, teamed up with Amazon uh, to integrate Fire TV into the Uconnect 5 platform. So it will give access to TV shows, movies, games, Alexa, vehicle features, and more. And guess what? Something we just talked about, the 2022 Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer will be the first vehicles to offer Fire TV built in with unique to brand capabilities. Uh, In-car connectivity allows passengers to stream their favorite shows together or separately uh, while staying linked to their digital lives. Hmm. <laughs> how, how well do you think this will work on a trip? I think if you have good, uh, if you have 5G connectivity, I think it will work well. I mean, I've I've streamed, I've streamed to my television in places where I didn't have Wi-Fi. Using my Wi-Fi hotspot and connecting it mm. to my Roku box, which is Fire TV, is similar to Roku in many ways, uh, and it worked fine. Now I wasn't moving, but then again, if you are in a car with an uh, a built-in antenna. And maybe you have 5G nowadays. Uh, it might work even better. I mean, the streaming is great. Maybe they build a huge buffer into it, so uh, you're not going to uh, lose this. But uh, it sounds great. Passengers can view Fire TV in high definition from the rear seats and the front passenger screen. A privacy filter disables driver viewing. So basically, it's like what certain people put on their business computers, so you can't stand behind right. you right. and say oh look at those look look what that guy makes <laughs> why does she make so much more than me yeah um so that's the type of thing that they'll be putting on the screen uh and it will uh, be touchscreen controls that will uh support for have support for compatible content uh auto specific remote uh pr will be an actual remote control that provides uh, a con quality control of the experience. Uh, and uh, this will all be part of Uconnect 5. Uh, I think this might be the best integration of television into a vehicle so far. Um, I mean, we've moved away from those flip-down monitors on the ceiling. Remember those? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> or, or the DVD player. You know? Yeah. Well, that made sense. I mean... Yeah, you know, but you had to have the DVDs. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, do people use DVDs anymore? I'm not sure they do. No, I don't think so. It's all streaming. It's all streaming. And so I think uh, you will see this probably come up somewhere else. My bet is Roku will come up with their own version and team up with somebody else uh, other than uh, Stellantis, right? That's how it works in the, of in the world. Of course. Uh, and you'll be able to buy this aftermarket for your car? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And let's face it, most cars are going to have a hotspot in there. And, yeah. and yeah. I, I think probably it would be great if uh, Internet providers, you know, came up with something where you could take, uh, you know, right now you can move around with your television, obviously. Uh, you can have apps and things like that. You can watch it if you're not in your house. Probably the same thing is going to go for your connectivity. So let's say you have mm -hmm. a wired connectivity in your home, uh, and now you're going to move over into your car. It will follow you. Maybe the, the same company will provide you with uh, Internet service on your phone or on your hotspot. You, you know, it will be wherever you are. There will be Internet connectivity. And... Certainly with 5G, this makes this much more viable in a car. Uh, and I think, I think it's good. I mean, it's certainly, uh, let's, let's say it, you know, what it'd be good for minivans. <laughs> well, uh, the fact is, you know, SUVs and minivans are people haulers. Yeah. And people include kids. And who doesn't want to 
Well, I, I actually, I like, I like just driving, so I don't need to watch anything. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't want to watch. I just want to drive. I'd rather be driving than sitting in a car, though. I've always felt that it was boring to kind of sit in yeah. a car. I, I rather, same here. Rather be driving it than than just uh, sitting in there because I typically fall asleep if I'm just <laughs> sitting there. So. Uh, but, uh, yeah, look for that Fire TV. To, it's going to roll out on the Wagoneer, and then it will be coming out uh, on other vehicles, I'm sure, and I'm sure we'll see other manufacturers do the same. Hey, you're listening to Cruise Control. We are live on Facebook Live and YouTube. We're glad you are along for the ride with us. Don't forget, uh, drop us a comment, uh, something you'd like to see on the show, something you a uh, guest you like us to get on the show. And, and we will try to make it happen, right, Les Jackson? Absolutely. Uh, we have usually a pretty impressive uh, list of guests. Yeah. And more wanting to come on. Yeah, more wanting to come on. So we will, uh, we will be getting to more of those uh, very soon. Um, a little more talk about the Tiger Woods crash. Uh, it looks like investigators are looking at uh, the black box data recovery on this vehicle. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department have executed a search warrant to obtain the so-called black box recording device from the Gen Genesis GV80. Um, typically, is this done in accidents less? Uh, do they typically do this or is this something that we're going to see a lot more of well uh, the, it's normally not done um you can't <clears throat> you, you actually uh, can't subpoena the black box um, from the owner of the vehicle it has to go to the manufacturer the manufacturer's engineers there is no black box you know like an airplane uh, it's it's built into the uh, main uh, ICU of the car. There are many computers in your cars, but the main uh, computer uh, has all of that data storage built in. So the engineers have to pull it out, not you or the your lawyers or you know it, it, it's not something anybody can easily retrieve. So in a sense, that makes it good evidence. So it's not something oh, yeah, that I yeah. could just go in with an OBD2 reader and pull out and say, oh, well, look, right. you know, he was going 80 miles an hour. It can't be manipulated that easily. Uh, it has to be pulled out with special software. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so you're not, um, well, if, if you were doing something wrong, um, then, then you know, the, the 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 legal system will get that data pulled out to prove that you did something irresponsible. Now, the, I don't. Has there been any case where this has happened so far? Or yeah, okay, and actually, yeah, it was the famous, used, used against people. The famous case a few years ago of the guy driving the Prius who claimed. Um, Unintended acceleration. Was that the? Uh, he was a state trooper somewhere, I believe. Or, no, that or was California the, that, Highway Patrol. That was the Lexus crash. Yeah, and they but said the a, throttle stuck open. Right. Okay. But there was a guy with a Prius who d destroyed the car and claimed unintended acceleration, and they they pulled. Uh, they they went to court. They got. Uh, Toyota's engineers to pull the data and it proved that he was driving recklessly and that uh, he never applied the brakes and there was plenty of throttle input so he was uh, he was well he may not have been lying but he he was wrong yeah wow all right so this might be something we see more often down down the road um, good news uh, for Nissan, uh, Leslie. Remember when we talked about their uh, Rogue and that they didn't uh, they didn't have uh, such good results, test results, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And that uh, they said, well, it was an early car and all that. Well, they've done well in the 2021 IIHS 
crash testing after they faltered in the NHTSA crash tests. Uh, and Nissan has just announced its intention to retrofit 2021 Rogues made before January 28th with new equipment to better protect the passenger in a crash on account of a two-star front passenger side NHTSA crash test. Uh, uh, Nissan said the changes include updating the passenger airbag module, replacing the front passenger seat belt, and updating related software. Uh, the second test of NHTSA, of uh, the NHTSA test will be run in May, but they, they've given uh, the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety released its crash findings, and it received the highest possible honors as the uh, uh, Rogue got a top safety fit pick plus, always hard to say that, uh, rating, which is pretty good, right? It is pretty good. Uh, this this happens frequently, by the way, that when these are tested, by the time the test agency makes the test, the, uh, the upgrades have already been made in the, in the outcoming models. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly, if I was buying a Rogue, I would certainly want the... Uh, the one that was uh, made after the 28th, wouldn't you? I, yes. Uh, I would want all. <laughs> Me too. Uh, uh, some of their other vehicles did well. The, the Sentra, the Maxima, uh, the Rogue. Uh, they got great ratings across the board. Nissan did. There's the Rogue there. Nice looking update on the Rogue, by the way. I, li I like what they've done with the vehicle. They've squared it off a little bit. Look forward to driving it. Look forward to getting into it. Um but some of their sedans did really well as well. Remember, they still make sedans, actually. Nissan Well, <laughs> Nissan <laughs> makes a lot of them, I believe. They still make a lot of sedans. They do. They know. do, and, and they're very good. The Maxima, people never talk about it. They never talk about it anymore. It is like it's, uh, it's like it is uh, no longer made, uh, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, we're going to talk about Volvo uh, next hour on Cruise Control, uh, which is show you're listening to with Fred Staub. That's me and Les Jackson. That's the other guy you keep hearing here. Um, but uh, they are going to move away completely from sedans and wagons. They're just going to go with crossovers. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, well, what can I say? <laughs> what can you say? Hey, they want to build. They want to build the stuff that sells. They want to build the stuff that's profitable, as well, right? That's right. And sedans, especially uh, lower price, are not terribly profitable. Yeah. Well, that's the problem, uh, especially with small cars. I mean, you need small cars in your lineup, but uh, they, if they are not profitable, I mean, why are you, why are you building them? It just doesn't make sense to build something that somebody's not going to. Um, you know, not going to view or not going to buy, right? That's right. Um, you got to offer them to the people that want them, but you, you have to make a business case. You have to make a business case for it, for sure. And I think, uh, I think you know, we will probably see virtually no sedans in the next uh, five years or so. And this, remember, this trend... It doesn't mean it doesn't. It's not because of electrification. It's not because of autonomous vehicles. They could certainly make electric sedans and autonomous sedans. It's just that people just don't want them right now. People uh, aren't buying them. People aren't buying them. So, hey, you are listening to Cruise Control. We are glad you're along with us uh, live on Facebook and YouTube. First week we're live on YouTube as well. So we welcome those uh, viewers. And uh, don't forget to check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com, where you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, find out about YouTube videos and more. And uh, Les, uh, here's a story you and I, we, we should probably continue on with this one because you and I talked about a little more information. Jaguar cancels more of its cars and more of its platforms, and I'm not quite so hmm. sure what the future holds for Jaguar. How about you? I'm not sure either. Um, they've got a very, very long history of cars, elegant cars. Mm -hmm. But uh, sure looks like it's going to be SUVs and uh, electric whatevers. 
Well, and that's the thing. Uh, this is an article in Car Buzz. Um, they are actually doing away with <laughs> their sedans. They, they, they're XJ. They are doing away with their modular longitudinal architecture platform. They say it's old and outdated. Um, so, really, I don't know what they're going to have to sell here. Uh, we talked last last week about the CEO saying, well, we don't think we're going to keep making um, – crossovers and they've had a couple of uh they've had a couple of uh successful crossovers so um it remains to be seen what they'll have to sell they they claim they want to be all electric by 2025 but the problem is what will they have to sell that is uh that is the problem and dealers are worried they want crossovers because dealers as you know when they see somebody come in and say, hey, do you have a three-row uh, crossover? I'm kind of cross-shopping uh, Lincoln and a BMW. I'd like to look at what you have. And the dealer's like, uh, I don't have anything like that. Not good, right? That's right. Um, and I think, as I, as I predicted a few weeks ago, I think we'll see uh, single dealerships, Jaguar, Land Rover. Yeah. And Jaguar will be used cars, <laughs> and <laughs> and and uh, Land Rover will sell the new crossovers. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. It's a, it's. I don't want to see the brand go away because it is uh, it is a great brand, and um, you know it would be sad to see it go away. But uh, let's hope that uh, that it doesn't. Hey, you want to do a little uh, automotive history here, Les? Um, sure. So on March 6th, 1977, Mercedes premiered the A-Class at the Geneva International Mm. Motor Show. No longer around the Geneva Show, right? That's been permanently canceled. That's that's gone. That's right. Of course, the A-Class was sort of a little, uh, it almost looked like uh, a smart car before the smart car. I believe the smart car was not out yet. I'm not sure about that. But I remember seeing one of these and thinking, like, wow, that is really small. And the the hood line and the uh, windshield A-pillars were at the same angle. And it was just kind of one of the first urban cars. Uh, yeah. 1977 yeah. it premiered, ahead of its time. Um, Considerably. Yeah. And it, it benefited from passive safety and space economy. Space economy, of course, the first vehicle to have space economy was mm-hmm. the Mini. The Mini. So uh, that was 1977, uh, 24 years ago. And 44 then, years. And, and then uh, 19, yeah, 1997, yes. And oh, 97. 97, Sorry. yes. And then 18 years ago on this date, the Mini 1D made its world premiere also at the Geneva Auto Show. It was the first Mini to ever feature a diesel engine. It, it went on sale in the U.K. on June 7, 2003. And at the heart of the vehicle uh, was a 1.4-liter four four-cylinder diesel developed in cooperation with the Toyota Motor Corporation. So... There you have it, a little bit of uh, uh, automotive history. And, and then this one, Les, this is kind of funny how how things go. Four years ago, on March 6, 2017, French car maker PSA, which is now Stellantis, right? Uh, that anna- is right. Announced the acquisition of General Motors European subsidiary, uh, which included the Opel and Vauxhall brands. They paid 1.3 billion euros for them, or 1.38 billion dollars, and uh, guess what? Now they uh, they own Chrysler as well, don't they? Yeah. Uh, well, everybody has owned Chrysler in recent years. Yeah, but uh, there you go. Well, that's our uh, historic uh, look at what was going on in the automotive world uh, not that long ago. Hey, we're going to roll the open for the second hour, so stay tuned to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. 
This is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin. Control. Because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Hey there, welcome to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. We're here live as usual. I'm Les Jackson. The other voice you're going to hear is Fred Staub. Fred is the one with the big pile of papers (laughs) uh, with lots of stories we're going to talk about. And uh, we always have fun. We always have good information. And this is no exception, is it? No, we've got a lot going on this week in the automotive world, Les. And we're going to start off this hour with uh, details on the E-Ray. The E-Ray is the uh, hybrid version, all-wheel drive, of the Corvette. It's supposedly going to take the place of one model in the lineup. We'll talk about that. And it's got some technology, too, some interesting technology. Yeah. Uh, Pouch batteries. We'll talk about that as well. This could be really, really interesting. Anyway, uh, Honda says it has a Level 3 autonomous vehicle ready to go. Yeah. Uh, Meanwhile, over at Tesla. Do I hear? Uh, over at Tesla, Elon Musk says his fully auto- autonomous car is just around the corner, and the and the self drive option will set you back ten thousand bucks. He's got to pay for that rocket that just blew up. I guess that involves a uh, organ as well, but uh, yes, yeah, we'll talk about this. It's an interesting story, Les Jackson, because he may charge people ten thousand dollars for something that cannot be used because the government may ban uh, That's right. this system. So imagine paying ten grand and then <laughs> saying, hey, you remember that software you downloaded? Well, uh, <laughs> make sure you delete it <laughs> by 5 o'clock tonight, right? Yeah. Yes. Welcome to Tesla. We want you to pay. <laughs> we want you to pay for something anyway. you may not be able to use. That's right. Anyway. Uh, across the ocean, Volvo is moving to all electric, all online sales, and completely away from sedans and wagons. Hmm. Yeah, well, the on uh, the all electric obviously is not too stunning because a lot of people have talked about this GM, Ford. Um, you know, uh, of course, uh, Jaguar has talked about this. We were talking just about right. talking about them. They don't really have any models right now, but they're talking about moving all electric. But online sales, I think that's one thing that's going to come out of COVID. People don't want to go to dealers anymore and spend four hours filling that's out right. paperwork and, and dancing around. They, that, they just don't want that anymore. I think they want a cleaner experience. They're used to Amazon-type things. They're used to... Apple type experiences. You go in, you buy it. That's the price, and and you order it, and you come in, you pick it up, and so I think that's a key point. But also sedans going away from sedans and wagons. That's kind of sad, right? Well, yeah, that's that's a given. Uh, it's just happening. Yeah. Period. Yep. Yes. And then uh, we're going to look at uh, Volkswagen launching their Project Trinity. They are completely. Remaking uh, cars, <laughs> basically, uh, the how they use computers, how they use uh, electric power. So we will talk about that. That's going to be a, a big part of the of the future vehicles at Volkswagen. It's going to be interesting. And Ford uh, doles out some cash to uh, to uh, patient Mach E buyers. They're getting more and more patient. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's. I guess it's never a bad thing to have someone dole out cash to you, but uh, that's that would work for me. Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll also talk at tech uh, about two new ways to charge up electric vehicles. Less uh, kind of people building their own infrastructure to charge vehicles. 
Uh, two interesting ideas. One of them could become a business opportunity. So we'll talk about that. One, I think, is a little bit more viable than the other. Yeah. And you're going to give a review at the wheel review of the Genesis GV80 Prestige Edition. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was a great vehicle. It really was. We'll talk about this. Of course, this vehicle was uh, uh, in the news a lot lately with uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Tiger Woods crash. Uh, actually, I think it uh, fared kind of well as far as uh, the news coverage. But, hey, when we come back, we are going to start off with details of the hybrid e -wheel. Stay tuned. Big news. Big news. Welcome back to Cruise Control. We're glad you're along for the ride with us. We are live on Facebook Live and live on YouTube Live. Live, 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 Les Jackson. And uh, if you have a question that you want us to answer about a specific vehicle, if you have a question uh, about uh, a guest you'd like to have on or a topic we like uh, you'd like us to cover on a future show, make sure that you uh, send it in the, put it in the comments, and, and we will follow up on it, won't we, Les? We will. If, the, if we can possibly do something, um, then we'll do it because, uh, it, you know, we, we get to get the, get the experience the same as you. You sound very uh, Washingtonian. If we can do something, we will do it. <clears throat> but we actually do it. Yeah, <laughs> we actually <laughs> There's the difference, folks. We yeah. actually we actually do it. So, uh, but uh, let's jump into this E-Ray story, Les Jackson, because this is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, you know, you and I have been hearing about this vehicle, uh, and it is going to be the hybrid version of the Corvette. Now, there are some details out there, uh, and. Uh, it's kind of like floating around out there. Uh, a lot of them comes from this SAE.org writer, Don Sherman, who appears to have the inside track on this, which is interesting that he would identify himself as the source, isn't it, Les? Well, that means they really want the information to go out. Yeah. Now, here's the big headline. Let's not bury the lead as my... Australian friends I used to work with in TV mm -hmm. used to say, uh, never bury the, the lead, mate. So the E-Ray, which will be an all-wheel drive hybrid Stingray, basically, will take the mm -hmm. place of the Grand Sport. So that will be the next step up between from the Stingray. The Grand Sport will be the E-Ray. And then uh, the uh, Z06 will be coming along with even more horsepower. Uh, this Stingray is going to be designed to accommodate GM's Ultium pouch-style lithium-ion battery cells, which will be located in a two-cubic-foot box within the structures of the vehicle's backbone, which currently houses coolant lines from the front radiators to the LT2 um, V8 engine. And according to this guy, uh, Don Sherman, uh, they already have done uh, the work on the uh, front spring damper steering components and uh, the rest of the front end material to uh, enable a pair of motors to have a straight shot into the car's front wheel hubs. Now, the motors uh, will be two independently controlled 50-horsepower uh, motors that will be butted together to raise the hybrid's output, total output, to more than 600 horsepower, while the mid-mounted LT2 6.2-liter V8 and its 8-speed Tremec dual-clutch transaxle axle will continue pretty much unchanged. You will lose some of the front frunk space but it's unclear how much and it's unclear if this will be a plug-in hybrid or if this will just be a hybrid but let's an all-wheel hmm. drive corvette that's going to be pretty incredible isn't it it is it's it's very uh, lamborghini-ish mm -hmm. uh it's 
it's exciting and it certainly explains uh, all that extra factory they built. Yes, yes, it does. And it also explains to me that we'll see a Cadillac model. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk about that. And, uh, you know, will the uh, will there be another Corvette-based Cadillac model? I think there should be. But, you know, it will probably, that I think will probably be a strictly electric vehicle. Yeah, I uh, think so. Yeah. Uh, exciting times, though. This uh, should be significant performance improvements in the Corvette. Not that it needs it. It is a good performer the way it is. Um, and there's no real clear point on whether this will be um, a plug-in hybrid or a uh, just a hybrid uh, where it helps out the engine. Will, the, will it be able to go into a fully electric mode? No one knows for sure. But actually, I, I think we have to thank this uh, SAE.org writer, Don Sherman, who appears to have a lot of information here. This is more than we've seen. Now, apparently the uh, Z06 will have even more horsepower than this, over 600. And then there's still uh, what I think could probably be the swan song for the internal combustion-powered Corvette, the ZR1 Zora, which uh, is going to have an even more powerful uh, internal combustion engine and probably over a thousand horsepower, right? Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, when do you think we'll see this E-Ray? I think, um, I don't know. I would say maybe 2023. Uh, yeah, I'd say a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not that far off and, uh, hybrid, uh, supercars are becoming very common. So I think, uh, I think Corvette wants to jump on that. Uh, and then they say this will probably be under $100,000. That's hard to believe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this article, this was in Carbo, says under $100,000 for sure. I don't know about that. I, I don't I don't know if, if they can say that at this point. But we'll, we'll have to see. I'm a big yeah. fan, fan of e-all-wheel drive, that XC... 60 that I drove had all wheel drive and uh, E all wheel drive. And I think that's the way to go. Don't have to run mm -hmm. the drive shaft back there. You basically run the wires back there, right? Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Makes sense. It's lighter. It gives you the same result. You can turn it on and off with a switch, basically. Uh, and I think it makes it a lot easier to package the vehicle. You don't need the big drive shaft hoop running back there. I think that will be the way people do all-wheel drive in the future. Will they do it for trucks that way? I think so. I think they eventually will. Yeah. 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 Hey, you're listening to Cruise Control. Uh, I am Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We are glad you are along for the ride. We are live on Facebook. When we come back, Facebook and YouTube, I should say, when we come back, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about Honda and their level three autonomy, which uh, which is interesting stuff. So stay tuned. Cruise control. Cruise control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. I'm Fred Staub. He's Les Jackson. We're glad you're along for the ride. Les, what do you think? Uh, has the time come for level three autonomy? Honda says yes. Well, sure. The, <laughs> the technology is there. So uh, there's no reason not to. Yeah. Now, Honda, Honda at level, we, first we should say what is level three autonomy? It means in certain situations, certain traffic situations, you can go hands off. Uh, right. I mean, we have right now we have, I guess, level one autonomy, like uh, we have pro well, pilot level, level two. Yeah. Uh, have you used those uh, systems where the vehicle will track the road? You have to keep your hands on it. Uh, some yep. of them are better than others. I found the one on the Honda Accord hybrid to be great. I left it on on a 200 mile trip. I just never turned it off. It just it was just smooth. 
others feel like somebody's steering like this. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, Audi is very good, but most of the others, uh, okay, but not great. Well, Honda announced this week that they're launching the new Honda Sensing uh, system, and uh, they have uh, we have a little bit of a, a video for it. Uh, but uh, this is uh, something that they feel that they are ready to go with. Uh, the Honda Sensing Elite Active Lane Change with Hands-Off Function. Maybe certain folks in the political world should have a hands-off function. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist that. But uh, yep. uh, it is a lane change system that will it will change lanes for you automatically using all the sensors out there and then in uh, like uh, stop and go traffic you can keep your hands off of the wheel and it will handle that and uh, I you know it, I kind of trust Honda more than some other folks what do you say yep um, I would feel confident with them yeah uh, this is not available in the U.S. yet. This is uh, uh, launched on their uh, Legend Hybrid EX, which is only available for lease in Japan. But you know that this is going to uh, this is going to be rolling out into their lineup uh, in the next couple of years, right? For sure, um, and uh, people will like it. Yeah, I think people will like it. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, they they will probably um, see this like look at here. They're they're showing what will happen in a uh, stop and go traffic jam pilot. It's going to be activated automatically. So when you're in a traffic jam, you basically can take your hands off your feet off the pedals and just kind of sit there. And uh, you can even <laughs> there they show a guy <laughs> watching a video, which probably we won't have here. I just don't think that's something we should start here. But uh, that's where a lot of accidents happen in a traffic jam. Uh, you know, they people lose uh, track of what they're doing, and then they uh, and then they get into accidents. I know whenever there's an accident uh, on certain roads in New York, there's typically more accidents. Because somebody is not paying attention, somebody yeah. is, uh, you know, they 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 just are not paying attention to the the stop and go nature of this. But uh, they are striving for Honda is striving for a con collision free society based on its global safety slogan, safety for everyone. <clears throat> it's a good deal. But now we should talk about as the Tesla turns. <laughs> <laughs> there is controversy brewing over at Tesla Les Jackson, um, and it involves uh, the full self-driving beta testing. It's, uh, it's uh, going on right now with a select group of customers, including things like automatic lane changes, self-parking, and the capability of navigating city streets and intersections. Uh, now, Tesla says they are doing this level five autonomy, but it does not rely on LIDAR or laser radar like uh, Waymo's also in development technology. <clears throat> LIDAR is those those spinning things, right, that uh, that we see those right. those spinning. Uh, what are they? Scanners? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Radar. Scanners, La laser radar scanners. So liner, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you can't put that on a vehicle production vehicle. <laughs> They're pretty ugly. Um, the thing is, Tesla is moving ahead, but the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is not convinced that this is safe. Uh, Musk says these will be available in Q2 for sure. Q2 of this year. And it is going to be a option cost of uh, $10,000. But there's some thought that people may pay this $10,000 and then uh, they may not be able to use it because it may be found to be less than safe. So, so there you have it. 
Is he pushing no, the envelope? Just uh, <laughs> that's just great. I, I always love buying something for ten thousand dollars that I can't yeah. use. You know, um, what do you think? You can't just you can't just like muscle ahead and just say I'm going to do it. I don't care, right? No, you can't. Um, also, I I think there will be delays in rolling this out, mm -hmm. probably all year. Doesn't he run the risk of being the first? And if if it's not approved, doesn't he run the risk when accidents happen mm -hmm. of major, major, major lawsuits? Then, well, on top of that, you, uh, there are federal criminal charges. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. It is not uh, not necessarily uh, like, well, I want to do it, so I'm just going to do it. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how this will work out. How will customers feel? I mean, he has a very active fan base. How will they feel if they spend this money and then they're told can't use it? It has to be, you know, erased from your car, uh, deleted from your car. Will they'll probably be mad at NHTSA. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I think they'll feel a little bit stupid or, or will they just uh will their anger be redirected to somebody other than uh, tesla i think it'll be use at your own risk oh <laughs> a giant, a giant uh, disclaimer shows up every mm -hmm. time you, you use it <laughs> yeah imagine that imagine that if you had a car where as as you turn the key, it says first you have to read this hundred and fifty yeah, page disclaimer <laughs> <laughs> and sign your name uh, before the engine will start. This should only take fifteen to twenty minutes uh, to get you through this. You know, uh, I remember I remember a few years ago, and I don't know why this was, and I would love to ask somebody about it. But Lexus vehicles, when we got them, they came with all these warning stickers all over them on the console, everything else. And I thought, wow, you know, why is this? This looks terrible. I would certainly, as soon as I got it, take all these things off of it. It looks stupid. Um, do you remember that? I don't know if you remember those. Early I on, do. I, I was like, why? I've, why, why do you know, like, don't like drive the vehicle at 50 miles an hour with the doors open, you know, things like that. Uh, warnings like that, obviously. Yeah. Things. So I had one that said, don't remove this sticker. <laughs> don't re uh, there's an interesting <laughs> sticker on the Honda Accord hybrid. It said, uh, if you're going to repaint this vehicle, this was on the door jam. It, 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 make sure uh you don't have temperatures above 150 degrees for the drying of the paint because you could destroy the battery in the car hmm. i thought that was interesting to see that on the door jam of the vehicle yeah hmm. yeah hey you are listening to cruise control radio and cruise control live on facebook live and on youtube i'm fred staub he's les jackson we've got a lot of stories to get to yet Les. Um, and let's talk a little bit about Volvo uh, because they are uh, going all electric. They announced that this week and uh, all electric by 2030, which is just around the corner, isn't it? A little closer than we thought. Yeah. Uh, well, they are going to be completely electric. And here's the interesting part. In a global announcement, they announced that they will be selling online. As part of the new commercial strategy, Volvo cars will invest heavily in online sales channels and radically reduce complexity in its product offerings and uh, offer transparent and set pricing models. I think that's a good thing, don't you? I do, but what do the dealers say? Uh, I think the dealers will basically be there your final, you know, what do they call that in uh, uh, logistics? The last mile. They'll be the last mile people. Mm. Uh, I think you're going to see more dealers where, yeah, they get the sale. And, yeah, if you need service, you go to them. But I think they'll eventually bring it to you on a flatbed, and that's it. Nobody wants to go in and get worked over anymore. I, I just don't think they want to do that. And 
do you need a, a whole big crew of people if the price is cut and dried? Like, uh, you know, you can yeah. you can just buy that online. It's like, okay, well, it's thirty seven thousand. <throat> you want the heated steering wheel and the heated seats? That's another thousand, and blah blah blah. And your total is this, and and that's it. I mean, why do you need to go in and and go through the uh, the dance anymore? Good point. I I can see this. I think you're right. I just I just think uh, that those days are over of spending the time. You know, they say it used to take four or five hours to buy a car. Mm. Yeah. So you you just I don't know. I I I don't think. I don't think that you will be doing that anymore. Maybe I'm wrong. I maybe there's a few people that will enjoy it. <laughs> maybe they will charge people additional uh, hmm. to come into a dealer <laughs> and negotiate their price, and they might think that's fun. I don't know. But uh, all electric by 2030, uh, a simpler lineup. And here's the thing that I know you will not be happy about. Uh, they're going to do away with wagons and sedans. So things like the V90 mm -hmm. cross country and the V60 will go away. Uh, this is according to the British magazine Autocar. Volvo sales mix is about 75% SUVs and the rest are sedans and wagons. Oh, boy. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, I think this is just... This is the sad part of it. They have two sedans, the S60 and the S90, and uh, at least one of them uh, will go away, um, and uh, and that's it. Um, the uh, they're talking about the XC40. I have not driven that. That 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 is uh, that is um, going to get kind of a, a, a fastback roof. That that will be there. What will replace the sedans crossovers? but more of a fastback roof. So you'll be able to get a crossover with a more of a square shape or more of a fastback roof in the back, and that will be hmm. the only difference. So There's also a rumor about an XC100, uh, which is, uh, is going to be uh, their flagship model, but we don't know any more about that. But as I said, I just got out of a XC100, 60 and I found it to be really nice. It, it's like going it's like being in a uh, Swedish uh, furniture store when, when you sit down and the <laughs> seats were some of the most comfortable I wanted to unbolt one and uh, make it uh, my office chair, but I don't think the folks at Volvo No, they probably say hey, uh, what happened to the seat? <laughs> 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 I, although I you know there have been talk. Uh, there has been talk that some of our automotive uh, journalist friends, one of them, took a television from a hotel room once on a uh, on a uh, a trip, one of the automotive uh, trips for a reveal. Uh, <laughs> I did hear that somebody said that. What can you do? What I just I just don't. Yeah. I, I just. Don't. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do with that person? Yeah. You're listening to Cruise Control with Fred Staub and Les Jackson. We're glad you're joining us live this week on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Don't forget to check us out at CruiseControlRadio.com for more information on the podcast version, the radio show, and more. CruiseControlRadio.com. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Volkswagen's Project Trinity, which is an interesting name. It's kind of a kind of a uh, uh, kind of a uh, uh, atomic name to me uh, but um, they gave the first design preview of project Trinity this is going to be an electrically powered sedan Les Jackson sedan sedan mm. it will be built in Wolfsburg from tw uh, from 2026 on and is expected to set new standards in terms of range charging speed and digitization. And it will be able to drive uh, highly automated, according to level four. Well, how does level four differ from level five? I always get confused with that. Well, level five is is total autonomy. No steering wheel. You know, the thing is, thinks for itself. 
Yeah, you do. Level four, uh, it has most of those features, but only works uh, in s certain environments. Okay. All right. So level four would be pretty high up there. It just uh, it would mm -hmm. be it would be um, it would be what most people that enjoy driving still enjoy driving to some extent would like, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's cool. All right. Well, uh, that is Project Trinity. Some of the developments, uh, it's kind of a, a blank slate there because we really don't know what some of those developments are, but they're basically completely rethinking the platform that they build cars on. Um, and it's basically the next generation of platform. Uh, and, and they say the Trinity involves uh, three crucial themes, a newly developed electronics platform with state-of-the-art software, the simplification of the supply structure and fully networked and intelligent mm. production at the main plant. Electric cars are going to be easier to build, aren't they? They will be, yeah. Uh, Daimler said, unfortunately, the downside of electrification will be that uh, they'll need less people to build them. Uh, and you're taking away mm -hmm. the two of the most complex things, or, or at least one of them, the, uh, the engine with many moving parts and, uh, um, you know, something that takes a while to build. So you're taking that away. Also, uh, I think there's going to be the, – the platforms are going to be the same across the board, the cars. It's all going to come down to sheet metal and interiors that differentiate them. Uh, so uh, interesting time when you think of that about that, about manufacturing and, and how that's going to change with electric cars. But that is Volkswagen's Project Trinity. Now, talking about a electric car that is already underway, Ford is offering some uh, money to Mustang Mach-E buyers. As a matter of fact, $1,000 cash and 250 kilowatt hours free charging due to delivery delays. I think you have to give it to Ford to step up and say, hey, we're a little bit late, but hey, here's some free charging and maybe $1,000 cash to compensate for those delays. Not a bad deal, and, and <coughs> something pretty cool that uh, that Ford has done, don't you think? I think it's very responsible. Yeah, very responsible. I look forward to driving the Mach-E. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, just this week, uh, Elon Musk kind of nodded his head to Ford and, and gave them respect. I think he sees that as a real challenge to Tesla uh, and and respects them actually that it mm. to me okay I know we might get accused of Tesla bashing sometimes but this is a much better looking vehicle than anything Tesla built Ford Model I a. agree you know I I would be more comfortable buying this than than buying a Tesla but that doesn't mean that uh, we hate everything Tesla I'm just talking about quality and actually design. I think that's uh, just a much more interesting uh, design, the Mach-E, than uh, anything Tesla has to offer. When you compare it to their Model Y or their Model X, this is just just much more interesting. I am not into the um, Spartan interiors of the Teslas. Um, and also, I still can't get over the uh, quality issues. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. Um, hey, let's talk about yet another manufacturer. We haven't talked about this in a while, uh, and that is Fisker. Now, Fisker, uh, uh, Henry Fisker, um, has the Ocean coming out, and he had talked about what he wanted to do as a differentiator is use solid-state batteries. Uh, and basically, I guess a solid-state battery is is a capacitor really, right? Yeah, it's just not there. It's not there. Uh, so he has decided to move away from solid-state batteries for the Fisker Ocean. That's the vehicle you're seeing right now. Uh, that's due to begin production at the end of 2022, and he has around 12,000 reservations. 
and it's going to be built by automotive supplier Magna, who uh, already builds the Jaguar I-Pace for the British car maker. Magna also built uh, BMWs for a while, so they are a pay-to-play car builder, which is an interesting type of company. There's a few of them, but uh, Magna has been doing it, as I said. Uh, didn't they? Did they build Z3s for a while? Magna? Uh, they did, yeah. Or, or was it X3s? One of them they built. Um, but they're going to be building this Fisker, Fisker uh, Ocean. So instead of using, uh, this according to News on the Verge, instead of using solid-state batteries that are more com uh, complex, he's going to use standard batteries and has uh, struck a deal with Foxconn, which is the uh, company that manufactures iPhones. Uh, so he's going to be using standard batteries. But that hasn't stopped others from uh, talking about uh, solid-state batteries. And uh, by the way, I wanted to give you this quote from Henry Fis Henrik Fisker. He said, uh, if you're 90% there, you're almost there. That's what he's talking about on these um, solid-state batteries. Until you realize the last 10% is much more difficult than the first 90. So, yeah, so yeah. It, it's, uh, it's probably the best choice to to move away from this with him. However, uh, there are still other manufacturers that are looking into solid-state batteries, including Toyota, who aims to begin production as soon as 2025 on solid-state batteries. So it will happen. I think uh, Fisker just realized it's not going to happen uh, in the time for him to get his ocean out there, and wisely he decided to to move away from it. You got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. I would say would be a good analogy in this. Uh, so true. So true. So true. He needs he needs a success. He he has had one failure. Uh, I like the look of the ocean. Um, mm -hmm. I like I like the fact that he's tried to make made it make it a recyclable vehicle and use uh, recyclable uh, materials. Uh, he has, uh, I believe, a vegan leather interior, meaning that it is not actual leather. Uh, he has a solar powered roof that will help with charging the battery, not completely replace it. Of course, uh, we know that wouldn't you need a roof that was about uh, 100 feet long to do that. <laughs> But it, once again, a good-looking vehicle of style. Um, the rear window looks to be a little tight, but uh, we'll have to see what it's like when it's actually built. But uh, he does have the cool door handles that uh, are recessed. So that's one good thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm look yeah. I look forward to it. I look forward to it. Hey, you're listening to Cruise Control. We are live on Facebook Live. And also YouTube Live, so we're glad you're watching. If you have a question, if you have a, an idea for a guest or something you'd like us to talk about, well, just put it there in the comments and we'll get to it for sure. Um, you and I have noticed this, Les, uh, that the destination costs of vehicles are climbing dramatically. For the longest time, they were $800, $800 and change, and then all of a sudden, they went above a thousand dollars. Now some are closing in on fifteen hundred dollars. This is a non-negotiable fee. So when you buy the vehicle, sometimes the price you see does not include destination. We always try to call that out, like and destination adds another thousand dollars, because that's it. You have to pay it. You cannot negotiate that fee away. It's, right. It's right. sometimes called an inland freight and handling fee. Uh, it is listed on the sticker, so it's not something that the dealer is just trying to tack on there. But it's become a considerable amount. Uh, this Consumer Reports article talks about someone that bought a Mazda CX-5 uh, in uh, 2016, and uh, or a Mazda 6, I'm, sh I'm sorry, in 2016, where the destination was $820. He bought a Mazda CX-5 in 2019, and he paid 1045 And it's a big step. So Consumer Reports looked into this, and it's kind of a gray area where manufacturers 
can just put anything in there and that's it. You have to pay it. They don't really they don't really provide any information on why the price went up, what's what's or what's components of this. And some are saying that uh, manufacturers are just kind of using this as a way to get more profit but not raise the price of the vehicle. They're just basically shifting it over to the destination fee. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, the, they, they always come up with ways of adding profit. Now, some of the manufacturers say that, well, it costs more to ship SUVs. Possible. I mean, look at the uh, okay. look at the Cadillac Escalade. Uh, on certain models, it's so big when they have the larger wheels on, they have to ship it with shipping tires that are narrower. This is for certain Cadillacs. So I would say yes, that would increase the price because we have to ship the wheels in separately to the dealer. Then somebody. You know, they have to take the other wheels off, put these wheels on. You know, it takes time. That costs money. There's something involved. Does it cost that much more money? I don't know, but it is a cost. Um, but mm -hmm. you look at some of these other models here. Ford Bronco Sport, not a typically big vehicle, but the, the destination fee for that is $1,495. Wow. And, wow. And the Ford F-150 and Ram 1500 pickups, obviously big vehicles, $1,695. Hmm. That's big chips, you know. Um, so Consumer Reports is doing an investigation into seeing if this is a way, you know, what's involved with this number. Why has it gone up higher than uh, inflation? Why has it gone up this high? And what are, what makes up this price? I mean, why is it that much more money? Um, do you think they're tucking additional uh, uh, profit in there? They could. Yep. They could be. Uh, yep. You know, uh, Dan Bedore, who you and I have worked with when he was uh, at several of the car manufacturers, he's now an independent consultant. And uh, as this article says, uh, 20, he has 25 years of experience executive experience at several car manufacturers, uh, he puts it directly at the destination price ends up being another lever the business can pull to increase re revenue. It, he says it does not take a mathematician to understand the value of a $100 increase to a company that sells till 2 million units a year. So it is one way to make profit, but uh, you know, we don't know what's in this number. And, and like I said, it the only way around this is to know that you're going to have to pay that. To know yeah, if yeah. it says 29000 you might have to add another 1000 or more on there. So it is there on the sticker. Uh, it is there on many websites. Uh, you just have to look for it and know that it is what it is. You know, it, it's sort of like, uh, have you ever ordered from a... Uh, a website and then you're like okay that's a good price and then oh yeah plus a five dollar <laughs> handling fee you know like yeah and it's like okay why didn't you tell me that up front you know i mean they are telling you up front there's a destination fee just know that it's going to be there and know that you're going to have to pay it and it it's <clears throat> it's just the way it is hey you're listening to cruise control your on-air automotive magazine. We are live on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. If you have a suggestion for the show, a guest, a topic you like us to cover, a vehicle you like us to review, uh, just let us know in the comments. We'd be glad to, to take a look at it and see if we can get that on the show for you. And don't forget to check us out at CruiseControlRadio.com where you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, CruiseControlRadio.com. Uh, Less a couple of ideas here, uh, talking tech ideas, about uh, how to charge up battery-powered vehicles. Now, as electric vehicles, the the you know nobody's in doubt these are going to be the 
big players in the next five to ten years. It's going to move quickly. Many manufacturers have decided to go all electric. Right. Um, so we're going to see more and more of these uh, vehicles out there. Let's say you're in New York City and your vehicle's parked on the street. There's no way to plug it in, and you live in a an apartment ten floors up, other than going to Home Depot and getting like fifty extension cords. <laughs> By the way, is there a limit to the amount of extension cords you can use for electricity? Yep. It depends on the, so on an, the size uh, of the... So 110 volts, you know, in a, in a uh, let's say a 20-amp circuit. How long a f extension cord can you get before eventually you can't run... Electricity won't run that long? Um, 100 feet, you're losing a little bit of the current flow. Okay. So it'll start getting real hot. <laughs> Ten stories up would be about 100 feet, let's say. So uh, you have a problem. There's not a lot of charging stations. There are people like Electrify America and, of course, Tesla with a supercharger network and all that. And there, there will be more. But there's going to have to be different ways for charging vehicles. Now, Ample is a seven-year-old San Francisco startup that has this idea of uh, automatically swapping batteries. So you would pull into this kind of carport that would take up two parking spaces in a parking, uh, parking lot, and the vehicle would sense, it would, it would know what vehicle you have, it would go under the car and remove the battery, pull it out, and put a new charge one in, and uh, the chief executive says that this would only take 10 minutes and it would work with any electric vehicle and at a cost as cheap as gasoline. While this sounds good, these are not uh, like D-cells that you flip a, a, a latch and, uh, you know, grab the battery out and grab a couple off the shelf and pop it in. These are bolted into cars. They're not designed to come out and some are I, I mean I've watched some people try to repair let's say Teslas on on YouTube and it's an involved process even to change mm -hmm. the battery in a Prius is an involved process it there's no way you could easily do this unless you said from the beginning okay we're going to have a standardized battery and uh, we're going to uh, have a standard connector on the battery and, uh, you know, you would be able to go under the car and unlatch something robotically and pull it away. I just don't see how this is uh, this would work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't either. I it just can't can't work practically. Yeah. It, it just seems. Well, and how would you have every kind of battery for a car at the ready? I mean, they don't even have that on tires yeah. now. If you go in to buy mm -hmm. tires, a lot of times they say, oh, we don't have your size in stock. We'll get it from the warehouse. But I, I just don't see this working. I mean, unless he could, unless he could um, get with manufacturers and say we're going to have, much like this standard charger connector, we're going to have a standard battery and there's a, a way of disconnecting it quickly and putting it back in. And what if you put it in and it doesn't latch in correctly? Or uh, what if it, it, the machine tries to put the wrong kind of battery in? Or what if you get a bad battery? You know, I don't know. It, it just, no. uh, this nope. just does not seem the way. Um, but on the other hand, there is this company called Spark Charge, which I think has a, a little bit better idea. Uh, and they're, they're, th they're thinking that this could lead to the gig economy. These are mobile chargers. Uh, that you can deliver a charge to anyone, either a 50 or 100 mile charge, and uh, it is uh, a five million dollar uh, investment was put into the vehicle by Shark Tank investor Mark Cuban. It's a mobile charging device called the Rody. It's a 120 kilowatt fast charger, and uh, it is not a generator or something like that that's brought, <laughs> brought in like the <laughs> diesel generator. <laughs> Uh, it is charged batteries and a connector on uh, basically a cart. And the idea is that you would say, hey, my, my, uh, my car is parked at such and such. Can you go charge it? Um, 
interesting. Uh, they've teamed up with um, with Allstate, and I, I think this could be something you would see, let's say you're in an, elect an electric car, in an electric car, you're along the highway, and you ran out of charge. This could pull up and charge you up <laughs> and uh, get you 50 miles so you could get to a, a plug-in charger, right? That would be – this makes more yeah, sense. It's, it's workable. And then they're trying to uh, make it into a business for people where for $450 a month you could rent this apparatus and then offer your own charging business. So you could uh, go into business and say, hey, I've got a charger. You know, uh, hey, you're down at the train station. I'll uh, tell me, okay, you've got the – the uh, red Mach-E with such and such license plate, great. I'll uh, come down there during the day and give you a 100-mile charge. What do you think of that? Um, I think that would work. It would certainly. In, in urban areas. Urban areas, yeah. I picture like a truck that comes along with an arm that has mm -hmm. these batteries. <laughs> <laughs> and he puts his flashers on. And then, uh, you know, the arm comes out, charges up, and that's it. Uh, how do you think this is going to all play out? I mean, I don't – I feel we're not quite there yet with the chargers uh, for electric cars, but I think it's going to be something we're going to have to definitely address very soon, don't you? Yeah, and I think there will be an infrastructure. Uh, we won't need this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Do you think it will be, uh, you know, the idea of the electricity um, in the road and a shoe comes down? and uh... That's, I think, decades away. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, two different companies with two different ideas on this, and uh, I, think, um, I think that's, you know, kind of uh, we're going to see a lot more of this, but. Hey, let's uh, let's do an at the wheel review, shall we? Um, mm -hmm. This is a vehicle that uh, has been in the news lately, and it is a uh, I I love this thing by the way. Uh, it is a uh, GV80 from the folks over at Genesis. Of course, Genesis being the luxury brand uh, from Hyundai. This is the 2021 GV80 all-wheel drive 2.5 liter T Prestige. Thank you. That concludes my review. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful vehicle. People, when I pulled up in this, people said, oh, that's the new Bentley? Uh, that is the new Bentley uh, um, crossover? I said, no, it's actually Genesis. And people are just getting familiar with this brand. Some people know it. Uh, and a couple of my neighbors said they loved it, but they have a hard time finding a Genesis dealer or finding vehicles, uh, Genesis vehicles. Uh, I think this is one of the nicest design crossovers I have ever seen. I mean, it just looks expensive. Not that it's cheap, but it looks more expensive than, uh, than it is. Ours was powered by the 2.5 liter four-cylinder TGDI, direct injection, 300 horsepower, 311 pound-feet of torque, turbo four. Uh, power came through an eight-speed automatic transmission, and it has great things like a self-leveling rear suspension, uh, 10 airbags. Uh, it has uh, highway driving assist, too, all the assists that you can think of in safety um, systems that you would want they're all in this uh the interior super luxurious uh a lot of rotary controls all of the controls were metal which i like because those are touch points and that makes uh that makes it feel more more luxurious that you're not dealing with plastic controls so a lot of rotary controls a lot of roller controls um and it had the big console, I think, that a lot of Genesis uh, vehicles are known for. I don't know whether some people like it, some people don't like it. I kind of like it because it brings the controls up to your 
uh, hand there. And they, as you can see, most of them are rotary controls. You have rotary control for gear selection, rotary control for the menus on the screen. Um, and then on the outside, I like the slat style lights. Now, I've often said these remind me of Pontiac lights from the 60s, which is not a bad thing. But uh, no. that that style plays out on the front and the back of the vehicle, and it's actually on some trim on the side of the vehicle. Um, ours was the Prestige Edition, and we added a few options to this. Now, the, the base price is 54850 We've got the Himalayan gray paint, which is $400. By the way, additional paint price is another thing that I've seen on a lot of vehicles we've been driving when we do at-the-wheel reviews. Uh, anywhere from, you know, $200 to $500 extra. But this was in Himalayan gray. We had the Advance package, which is $4,350. 20-inch alloy wheels with all-season tires. Leather seating surfaces, Lexicon, 21-speaker audio, uh, audio system, surround view monitor, blind spot view monitor, remote parking assist, parking collision avoidance. And then we added the Prestige package for $4,400, which bumped the wheels up to 22 inches with all season tires, electronically controlled suspension, uh, this actually removes the rear self-leveling function. Heads-up display, power driver seat, bolster and cushion extension, ergo motion seat, three-zone climate control, heated second-row seats, and road active noise cancelization. Uh, you're going to ask with 22s, how did it ride? Isn't that what you're going to ask, Les Jackson? Yes, I was. Uh, well, I found it to ride very well. Matter of fact, in the normal mode, I found it to ride almost a little bit too cushy, believe it or not. Uh, but they've done a great job of engineering the suspension to deal with 22-inch wheels, which typically leave very little sidewall on the tire. Uh, I found that was not an issue in this vehicle, though, and I, I found it to ride really well, really quietly and uh, was uh, certainly you could feel the luxury in this vehicle. Um, the total price, including inland freight and handling, which was 1025 which actually is not bad these days, was 64825 For a vehicle that really hmm. makes you stand out, you get good coverage, three years, 36 thousand miles complimentary maintenance three years 36 thousand miles complimentary service valet complimentary genesis connected services for three years three years complimentary map care which is nice update your maps um and uh, you know a nice nice deal for this mileage um uh, not huge uh 22 highway 20 uh, i'm sorry 22 city 25 highway uh, total uh, number, aggregate number of 21. Uh, it has not been tested for uh, safety ratings, although uh, past news events have shown that the uh, GV80 is <laughs> very safe. <laughs> we had some real-world testing, yep. uh, and actually uh, I think a lot of people said it, it, did, uh, it did very well. I like the styling. I like the big uh, shield grill in the front. And I like the fact that the roof line kind of tilts back a little bit and the slat lights uh, and themes that are carried out through the headlights, the side side uh, detail there, and the back. I love the side silhouette of this vehicle, too. They've done a great job. It's very luxurious. I like to try the smaller version of this, the GV70, uh, when that becomes available. I also like the way the steering wheel looked. I can't explain it. It's just a pleasing shape. Sometimes you just got to say it's a pleasing shape, but yeah. very, very luxurious. I like the integrated uh, spoiler in the back, how they did that uh, on the hatch. Uh, and I also like how they played off the exhaust tip shape plays off the grill. So that uh, that is, I think, great detailing, great styling. Uh, big fan of Genesis. Um, I think they're a brand to watch. They're, they've got a, a lot going for them. Luxury uh, without the huge price. Uh, and 
the vehicles are easy to use. I, I found, uh, you know me, I hate it if I can't find something in a vehicle and I have to look around for it. Uh, mm -hmm. So this, this vehicle was not the case. If you need more power, you can get a V6 too, but ours had plenty of power. Once again, it was the 2.5 liter four cylinder uh, with 300 horsepower and 300 pound feet of torque, eight speed automatic transmission. So there you have it. The 2021 GV80 all wheel drive 2.5 T and uh, that will wrap up this edition of Cruise Control that uh, was live on Facebook and YouTube. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, Les Jackson, Cruise it's time Control for me Radio to say, is your on air automotive talks. magazine. Go to www.cruisecontrolradio.com for more information. It's time for me to say, I'm Fred Staub. I'm Les Jackson. Thank you for listening once again. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to uh, have us cover a story that you'd like, like us to cover, get a guest on, talk about a specific vehicle. Don't forget to put it in the comments on either Facebook, our Cruise Control uh, Radio Facebook page, or Cruise Control Video. It's all one word over on YouTube. And don't forget to uh, like us and follow us and uh, check out some of our other Cruise Control Video videos over on YouTube. So time for me to say cool. so long. We'll see you down the road, and we'll see you next week. See ya.